Let me tell you, I, this has been a crazy, crazy exciting week. Hi guys, it's Misty and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Misty and I'm a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. And I also sell antiques online and on my YouTube channel. This is my weekly what sold on eBay for the week of January 26th through February 2nd. It was an amazing week. I had found a really good treasure at the Goodwill and I ended up selling it very, very quickly for very, very high profits. So let's go ahead and get into what sold for me on eBay this past week. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the Sellers Hub and you can see here my numbers for my total sales and the percentage that my sales had gone up since last week, which this number is gonna drop drastically next week and that's okay, it was a good week and I'll live on the high while I can. And you can see here, this all of the action happened on Wednesday. And on Wednesday alone, my net sales were $1,313. So that was an awesome day. That was a very exciting day for me. All right, so let's go and check out what sold. I am still selling Hallmark ornaments. So again, I say this a lot. I buy these in grab bag lots at Goodwill for $2.99. A lot of times there'll be 10 to 12 ornaments in one bag. And I don't sell them for a lot and I do offer free shipping. But when it comes down to it, I'm still making my money back because of how much I bought them for. And it doesn't take very long to take pictures and to get it listed and it doesn't, it's worth my time. The next item, oh, I didn't tell what that was. This was a 1998 Hallmark Joyful Angels. This was the third in the series. And this one actually was a spring or Easter ornament. So yeah, they make spring and Easter ornaments for Hallmark as well. This next item is something that was featured in one of my YouTube sales that didn't sell to one of my customers online. And so I brought it home and listed it on eBay. Sold pretty quickly, sold it for $10, free shipping. It was very lightweight. Um, it is this vintage pipe smoking tobacco tin. Now there are a pretty big collector's market for these tins. The condition isn't the greatest, as you can see. So these are a, there's a collector's market for these guys. And you can see here, I have the measurements on here. There's a, there is surface pitting on the back. The inside is clean and empty. When you're selling items like this, it is pretty important to put in the listing that the item is empty, or you'll get a lot of questions asking if there's contents are still in the back. So I do like to put that the, that the tin it, or the can is empty or it's full depending on which one it is this next item is a vintage Auburn rubber company yellow toy road grader scraper tractor number 3560 sold for 1550 free shipping it was very lightweight these were um, there's also a collector's market for these Auburn cars and you can see maybe if I can zoom in here you can see right in here right in here it does say auburn on it so that's a telltale sign for these little tractors and they do make cars they're lightweight uh it was un it was first class to ship it and it sold rather quickly and this was something that i also had in the shop the next item is a single stitched t-shirt from arizona it was from the 90s it was one of those sophie aztec with the Aztec print on it and it was single stitch. It did have a couple little flaws, a couple little small little pinholes that I did point out with the pencil. I always do take a picture of the single stitching just to show that and if there's any dates on the graphics itself. And you can see this one was dated 1995. Sold for $14.44. I did do free shipping. I've had it for a while, took a while to sell. But it did, and away it goes. The next item is something that I got at an auction grab bag or an auction box lot. And what that is is just a bunch of items in a box, and you get the box, and you might see a few things that are good in there, and you might find straight up trash in there. These were a set of vintage Disney Mickey and Minnie Mouse. They were these large sew-on patches, and you can see 
they were about six inches wide and they were approximately i don't know 10 inches tall they were rather large size now minnie had a, some issues with her tail as you can see here her tail was almost coming off the rest of her body but other than that they were in nice condition there's the back of them and these sold for thirteen dollars and 59 cents and the buyer paid 315 shipping the next item is another Christmas item. It's a cross stitch kit. I picked this up at Goodwill for 99 cents uh, and it sold for $15.99 and the buyer paid $3 shipping. Now these, it, it doesn't necessarily matter what brand it is. A lot of the times it's just considered what the graphic is as what's going to sell these things. This one was brand new. The, the package had some openings there but you can see it was all new the pattern was new and i know that my mom has been selling these cross stitch kits online and she's actually been selling just the patterns alone online so even if you have a bunch of patterns just laying around if you're if you do cross stitch you can still list them and sell them online because people will like to buy the patterns and make another item themselves Another Christmas ornament. This is another vintage Hallmark 1995 Baby's First Christmas. Sold for $12.74. Did do free shipping. It did ship first class. This was another ornament that I bought in a Goodwill grab bag lot. No box, just a loose ornament. The next item is something that I also had in the shop and I have a lot of tiles and I just wanted to give them a try. And they don't sell for a whole lot, but they're easy to take pictures of. This one was a Wapu Tile Studio. This was a little kiwi, a little Australian or New Zealand kiwi bird. Um, and it sold for $13.60. I did do free shipping. It did ship first class. It had no damage on it at all. You can see here is the back. So it did give me a lot of information to look up comps for it. And had it for a long time. Not going to sell tiles unless... I can bring a little bit more money into them. So that's going to require me doing a little bit of research and see if I can sell them for a little bit higher of a cost. The next item is a vintage kitchen trivet. I collected these and this is one of those things that I had in my collection and then I decided that I was going to um, thin out some of my collection. This one sold for $16.99 free shipping. This looks like a heavy thing but it was very lightweight. It shipped first class. It's made out of an aluminum uh, and it did have some fading in the, in the paint, as you can see here, and some chipping around the paint, but it's an unusual shape. They're normally square. And this one sold for $16.99 and this sold really quickly, almost as soon as I listed it, it sold. The next item is a vintage Billie Holiday single stitch t-shirt. It was, um, the graphic was from 1949. The shirt obviously was not from 1949, but it was a cool shirt. Very unusual graphic. You don't normally see a Billie Holiday shirt, a graphic t-shirt. So I went ahead and picked it up for $1.99, sold it for $21.50. I did do free shipping. It did ship first class. The next item is these vintage kitschy sunflower Dixie cups. Now I picked these up at the Goodwill bins. They were very, very clean. They're obviously from the 70s. They had a number on the bottom of the cup, so I was able to look up the number. It was number 348. They were tall glasses. Sold them for $15.30. They were lightweight. There was eight of them. I probably paid a quarter for them, maybe not even a quarter, at the bins and sold them for $15.30. I do pick things like this up because people have these retro kitchens or retro bar areas and they want to display some of these retro pieces in them. So I do pick these up when I can find them for a really good price because you're not gonna buy these. You can't buy these at Walmart anymore. So people are looking for these sorts of things. The next item is something that we also had in the shop for a while. We had a lot of jewelry stored in this that we were researching a little bit more. And so I got the jewelry listed and I decided I was just going to go ahead and list this um, velvet lined vintage jewelry box. Here's the outside of it. Um, and I don't know if it was a Farrington textile box. So I put a question mark. I wasn't sure. It didn't have any labels on it, but a lot of times they don't. 
and I did compare it to other ones that I had found online, but I wasn't for sure. So I did put the question mark because I wasn't for sure. And this sold for $21.50 and the buyer paid $4.50 shipping. The next item is this Texas Tavern Hotel, Roanoke, Virginia charm. This was something that I kept in that jewelry box. Dad picked these up probably at a flea market. There are two of them, and I had these both listed singly. The buyer actually sent me a message and asked if they, they sent me an offer for both of them, if I would combine shipping, and I gladly did. They were very, very lightweight. They did ship first class. They actually still paid $3.80 for shipping. Sold the pair of them for $15. You can see this one is from the Texas Tavern in Virginia, and this one is from the hotel. Roanoke. They're just collector's tokens from 1998. Still considered vintage, but not as vintage as most other things that I sell. This next item was something that I just recently picked up at Goodwill. I paid, I believe, $1.99 for it, and it was this Aloha Wood Handcrafted Wood Art by the Lee family. Um, it was new with tags. It was a beautiful piece with this inlaid wood very, very quality piece, new with tags. I sold it for $19.99 and the buyer paid $4.60 shipping and it shipped first class. The next item is also something that we had in the shop that I decided to put online and it is this vintage Dale Evans and buttermilk. That was Dale Evans horse. Um, it's, a, it's a chrome plated ladies or girls wristwatch. It did not work. It had been overwhelmed. I did put that in the um, the listing great vintage condition not working and it sold for twenty one dollars and fifty cents and the buyer paid four sixty shipping and you can see here it is chrome plated so I did make sure that I got a picture of that the next item is this vintage Aladdin wide mouth vacuum bottle with pl the plaid the cool thing about this thermos was that it still had the original label on it. So when you would buy these from the store, this would be on the shelf and then when you would use these, you took off the paper and you can see here it still had the price tag. So this was a new old stock thermos. Very rare, very cool to find. Sold it for $19.12 on a 15% off sale. I do run sales every week. I change things up a little bit. This one did sell on a 15% off sale for $19.12 and the buyer paid shipping. Really cool old piece. The next item is just a coffee mug that I actually had in my own personal collection that I'm thinning out. I'm not going to read to you what it says. You can read that yourself. Sold it for $15.99. The buyer paid $8.25 shipping. It did ship priority. Um, and it was made by this, oh, what was it that? Paper or, or pornographic was the name of the brand that made this. You see, see the way that it was spelled. So it's just kind of a neat, funny saying on a mug, and those t mugs typically, typically are the ones that sell for me. The next item is also something that I picked up at an, in an auction box lot, and it was this Mickey, Mickey's Christmas Carol Jiminy Cricket Ornament, the Ghost of Christmas Past, from the Walt Disney um, collection. What does it say? The Walt Disney... Oh, Collector Society sold for $28.99 and the buyer paid $8.25 shipping. I do have a couple more of these. They do have the certificate of authenticity. There are collectors out there, so if you can buy things like this, definitely look up comps to see if there are items that are selling because sometimes they're mass produced and so you want to kind of veer away from those unless they're kind of more rare pieces. So this one I got for a great price, so it was worth it to me. The next item, these were actually in my own personal collection that I'm thinning out as well. They are these vintage 1970s Holly Hobby with a blue, blue bonnet hat, these little porcelain trinket and bell, and this was a bell, a candle, an egg, and a trinket box. Um, I picked these up at Goodwill for 99 cents. I think maybe I paid $1.99 for the trinket box. Had them in my own personal collection for years. The candle holder actually had a little chip on the corner. And these sold rather quickly for $25.50. Buyer paid shipping. 
The next item is also something that I had at the antique store. This was a vintage gold seal cinnamon spice cardboard paper. This was a paper label spice tin. A little bit more rare than the metal ones, a little bit earlier than the metal ones, a little bit more harder to find than the metal ones because they get damaged a lot more quicker. This one sold for $22.50 and the buyer paid $3.80 shipping. And, you know, this one had some damage issues. You can see here that it was cardboard box with a paper label on the outside. It was empty. I did put the measurements and any other information that I can get. But again, I keep my listing short and sweet. The next item is a vintage flow, flow blue salad plate from the Grinley Argyle. It's a Victorian. I put Victorian farmhouse just as keywords. Um, this one... So this one was, let me see. Yeah, this one, was, I had two of these. One of them had chips and it already sold. This one did not have any flaws. It was in great condition. And you know that flow blue kind of looks like the blues are muddled and kind of running together. It's a very highly collectible piece. Even if they have chips on them, along, you can still sell them, you know, depending on the pattern and the style. And I got this at Goodwill for 99 cents and I sold it for $25.50 and buyer paid $8.25 shipping. The next item are these Cole Haan City Men's Black Italian Leather Slip-On Loafers, size 12. Sold them for $35.50 and the buyer paid $5.50 shipping. Cole Haan is a good brand if you can buy them that are in great shape. This next little cute thing is a vintage French bulldog. It's a little sitting figure made in Japan. It um, is seven inches tall. It was marked Japan on the bottom. Sold it for $34.50 and the buyer paid $8.25 shipping. Cute little piece. It did have some flaws. There was a little crack, not a crack, but a, like a little glazing flaw on his leg right there. And so I made sure that I listed that in the listing and he had small spots of glaze missing on his ear and he still sold for $34.50. I did put Frenchie in the um, description because a lot of times people will refer to French Bulldogs as Frenchies. So I thought I had the space so I thought I'd go ahead and add it in. The next item is these Dinner at the Waldorf RCA Victor Misha Four. These were 78 RPMs four records in this sleeve very boring pictures but the cool thing is that these are from the 40s they are new old stock they've never been taken out of their original packing that's what makes these really pretty unique um, you you find these really thick um, record collections at Goodwill a lot some of them can be worth money but this what made these this one worth $38.25 is the fact that it was still sealed in its original packaging. And that actually the buyer wanted me to go ahead and open the package to make sure that the records were not broken on the inside. I made sure that I had that communication back and forth through eBay that he wanted me to open the package. So if he gets the item and says that the package was opened, I have proof in my emails stating that he asked me to open them. So always, always, always keep your communication with your buyers on eBay, not in private emails. They must contact you via eBay. The next item is this vintage Fenton Ruby Fairy Lamp. It was hand-painted. It was artist signed. You can see here the artist was Francis Burton. It was signed on the inside. It was Mark Fenton on the bottom. Again, I picked this up and I kept it for a little while, but then decided I don't need this. And so I listed it and sold it for $32.72 on a 15% off sale. And the buyer paid $8.25 shipping. The next item are these Dansko Women's Pebbled Leather Metallic Mother Mary Jane Comfort Shoes. They were kind of a silver color. It's kind of hard to tell in the picture. They did have a little bit of peeling, I guess, away from the leather. And I did take pictures of that. And I did list that in the listing. And the buyer paid, or they sold for $38.50. And the buyer paid $5.50 shipping. 
This next item is something that I picked up at Goodwill for $1.99, and it is this cool 1990s Bart Simpson single-stitched Cool Your Jets Man t-shirt. It was an SSI tag made in the USA, single-stitched, and at the bottom, I think I got a picture of the bottom. Maybe I did. Oh, yeah, down here. It was dated 1990, 20th Century Fox. This shirt was in excellent condition. It was a nice, crisp shirt. It had no flaws on it. Sold it for $45, and the buyer paid shipping. That was a great sale. That was an exciting sale, too. The next item is this vintage 1980s Levi's Stonewashed Denim Trucker Jacket. This I picked this up at the Goodwill bins a couple years ago. And my daughter wanted it. So she had it for a little while. Decided that she didn't really want it anymore. And so I listed it online. And I sold it for $42.50. And the buyer paid $8.25 shipping. Okay, so now we're getting into the exciting Nora Fleming sales. I'm not going, I'm just going to kind of barely quickly go through these just so you can see what they are and what I sold them for. This was the very, very first one I listed. And I sold it very quickly, almost as soon as I listed it for $85. So I thought, mm, oh, I don't know, maybe I should have listed it a little bit more. And the thing about these ones that are the more rare ones is the fact that the older ones are embossed with these designs all over them. The newer ones are just kind of flat. They don't have this embossment on them. And you can see here this N and F that stands for Nora Fleming. So that are those are her initials. That's what make the what makes these. These are her earlier ones. They're a little bit more collectible than the ones that she still makes today. So this one sold for $85, and I did charge shipping on all of these. So all of these that sold, the buyer did pay shipping. The next one was the Christmas tree, and I have to let Brutus out again. I've let him in and out and in and out. We're going to let him out again. The next one is this Christmas tree sold for $120 and the buyer paid shipping. And again, you can see it's embossed with the N and the F. And these are basically, they have these little tubes that stick into different plates. And you buy these and interchange them out. If People do collect these things. The next one is the acorn uh, leaf. And leaf. You can see here it had a little acorn underneath it and the leaf was orange. Again, it had the embossment, the N and the F. This one sold for $150 and $4.60 shipping. The next one is the birthday cake. The birthday cake sold for $135, $7.50 shipping. The next one is the butterfly. The butterfly um, sold for $120, $4.60 shipping. The next one is the shamrock, and the shamrock sold for $130, $7.50 shipping. And then we have the birthday hat. The birthday hat sold for $130, or $135, it was $7.50 shipping. And these are all retired. These are not made anymore. This is what makes them so desirable because they are harder to find and they're no longer made. Now we're getting into these crosses. It's kind of hard to tell in this picture. These were like a pearly white um, cross, and they did have the NF embossment on them. Um, I listed this one at $100. I honestly thought these weren't going to be the ones that would sell much for me. So these were the last ones that I listed. I listed this one at $100. As soon as I listed it, it sold. So I thought, huh. Maybe I should list the next one a little bit higher because I could not find comps for these. So I was kind of like just throwing a number out there and just seeing what happened. This one sold for $100 very, very quickly. So I listed the second one for $150. It took about 20 minutes, but it sold within 20 minutes. So I listed the next one at $150. It sold immediately. So, and all by different customers. So then I thought, okay, I need, maybe I'm asking, maybe I should, I can get a little bit more. So I listed the next one for $170 and it sold immediately too. So I mean, it's kind of, 
I'm kicking myself that I didn't list the other ones a little bit higher, but hey, I'm happy because I still am making killer profits on these because I paid $6 for the entire bag of them. So I am thrilled with what I have sold them for. The next one is the, the American flag. Um, this one sold for $250, $7.50 shipping. And last, the umbrella. This was another one that I could not find comps for, and I just thought I'm just going to throw a number out there and list it. And this one sold uh, rather quickly for $300. The buyer paid $7.50 shipping. It was a crazy week, guys. Crazy, crazy week. And I'm so thrilled with my sales this week. Let me tell you, uh, this has been a crazy, crazy exciting week. When you have sales that um, move very, very quickly for a very, very high profit, it makes you very excited and it gets your blood pumping that you want to just keep listing and listing and listing. And that's what I've done. I have listed all weekend long. I've made a lot of sales and that is the key. You have to keep listing. You're not gonna sell your stuff if it's sitting in the corner. You gotta list it, so list it. Give yourself a goal. Say, I'm going to list five things this week. Next week, I'm going to list seven things this week. So give yourself a goal. You will be able to do it if you just keep listing. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the numbers. My sales this week were $2,674.24. My sales were up 235.9%. Now, is that an average for me weekly? No. It helped that I had those amazing Nora Fleming pieces to really boost my sales up. I wish I had more. I wish I could just go to Goodwill and find them every day. But those kinds of things happen every once in a while. And they don't happen all the time. You just have to keep searching and you have to keep researching things that you see that you may think may be nothing, but they end up being something. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you were able to learn a little bit of something and it gives you something to look for when you are outsourcing or like I say, take things out of your cabinets. I did that a lot this week. I'm getting rid of stuff, took it out of my cabinet and sold it. And I can move on to my next collection. But anyway, I hope that you give this video a thumbs up leave a comment in the comment that box. Let me know what you sold this week that maybe surprised you a little bit in your sales. But I will go ahead and say goodbye and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.